Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa and to our first major conversation, uh, State High Court in Umahia, Abia State in Nigeria Southeast, has declared uh, that the Niger or ruled that the Nigerian federal government violated the fundamental human rights of uh, detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra group, Namdi Kanu, when the military invaded his home on the on September 2000, in September 2017, of course, in that operation that was well publicized with um, videos surfacing online. To look at the implications of this and the award of one billion naira as uh, damages to Namdi Kanu, we have as guest joining us via phone on the breakfast this morning, a legal practitioner. He is Uvans, Evans rather, Ufeli. Good morning to you, Mr. Evans Ufeli. Morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, the federal government, of course, declaring that uh, that invasion by the military um, on Namdi Kanu's home in Abia State in 2017 was a, a violation of his fundamental human rights. One billion naira awarded as compensation to Namdi Kanu. Um, of course, also the federal government asked, being asked to tender a letter of apology to him and publish this apology in three national dailies. What's your take on this? Yes, um, it is important that we understand that this ruling and this judgment that was given is different from the ongoing case uh, he has with Kano has with the federal government. This one is a civil case. Sometimes in 2017, when during the tendency of the of the trial he has with the federal government, the army invaded the premises. And at the end of the day, he left the country. Even though it was later interpreted that he don't stay. But the federal government was absolutely responsible for that. Because trial was ongoing on the substantive suit. They, they went there and invaded his family. And that led to the appearance abroad. So now, the fundamental right enforcement matter was filed. And now the judgment is clear. Um, the Talking about Namdi Kano as a Nigerian, this could have happened to any other person. But the truth is that the federal government must obey the provision of that judgment or uh, appeal it. And that is it for the provision. Uh, it is important to also stress that the enforcement of the fundamental rights of Nigeria is, is critical when there is violation. In this case, his, you know, right to dignity of human person was violated, right to life and the rest of it. So the, the threats and the, the level of brigandage that was leveled against him uh, is it, one that um, uh, uh, it, it's a celebration for the, for, the, for the judicial system on enforcing the right of uh, Nigerians. So the ball is now in the court of the federal government to so go ahead and uh, write the apology and publish accordingly and then pay the sum stated in the judgment. Okay. Uh, 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 of course, uh, the, the uh, lawyer to uh, Namdi Kanu uh, in this particular matter, Aloy Ejimako, did point out that um, uh, there may be implications of this uh, for the ongoing case, the criminal case before the High Court in Abuja, uh, presided over by uh, the Honorable Justice Bin Tanyaku, uh, based on this particular ruling by the court in Umwaya, uh, particularly the fact that um, uh, he said, and I quote, if your fundamental uh, rights were violated, then it means legally you cannot be said to have jumped bail because the idea of jumping bail and the rendition are related uh, to what happened uh, to the military invasion in 2017. What, what's your take on, on the implications of yes. this ruling for the ongoing trial? Okay, um, just before we actually well, uh, come to the answer, Mr. Ivan Sufili, let's quickly take a look at the track you know, from the lawyer. We'll be right back. That by the grace of God, by the time the judge calmly, dispassionately examines the step-by-step -step destruction of these camps, then, like I submitted in court, 
she will go to the next stage, which is to grant us our prayer too. And our prayer too is that there be no valid legal counts in the church to defend. She should dismiss all of them and set free. That is discharge and acquit Mazi and now the canon of any offenses. What the prosecution tried to do was to insist that because today was set down for hearing, that the trial must go on, notwithstanding the pendency of this, this application, which we have filed, and not also withstanding the pendency of a second application, a 26-page motion for bail. And I pointed out to the court that that was not the law. That is not the law that the Supreme Court has held in several cases. All right, uh, Barrister, if, if you can hear us, um, um, that was the lead counsel to the Namdekalu Nam team, who just uh, joined uh, the team uh, yesterday, or Tuesday, rather, uh, Chief Michael Zekome, SCN. Um, um, so, so you were telling us about the implications of this ruling uh, in the human rights enforcement case on the criminal trial going on. Yes, because the federal government has contained in the disappearance of Namdekalu before his rearrest. They have maintained that he jumped bail. But part of the condition of the bail that was granted to him was that he should not travel out of the country or another. But they forget that it's the same federal government country that went and raided his home. And then it went there with so much violence, killed a lot of people. And he had to run away for his life. So now that the courts have given a judgment that his rights was violated, it cannot be true any longer that they actually jumped bail. But he was driven away. He, he, he could have, he could have stayed for the, the criminal trial if, uh, uh, if it were not for the fact that the federal government went to stop, you know, uh, uh, his, his residence. Now, having done that, he left. So, so, so that issue of jumping bail should be revisited. Should be revisited, revisited in the charge. I mean, he didn't jump there. He didn't jump there. He was walked out of the country by the army. So that's the implication. But, but, uh, but, Barrister. You know that charge is fine. Yeah. You know yeah. that charge is Okay, so so let's further you know probe down and look at uh, you know this particular case uh, with the with the fact that the federal government is expected to pay the sum of one billion naira. Do you see the federal government obeying that, or do you see the government appealing uh, this particular ruling of the courts? Well, from the Brazil? government have not made uh, for now. I've not made any pronouncement as to that the what they want to do in respect to that. But by law. Uh, the judgment is a judgment from the court of first instance. So there's actually options for appeal, which is uh, the court of appeal and then the Supreme Court. So if the federal government, if there are two options open to the federal government now, either to obey judgment, uh, pay the judgment sum, the judgment creditor, and uh, make uh, the apology and publish same daily. Or appeal the judgment uh, and then uh, go for that to ask me, ask me the case. So that is the uh, two options to come to the collection. Okay. But, but what do you perceive? Do you see this government uh, appealing the case or obeying the court ruling? Like I said, they have not made any uh, pronouncement as to what legal thing, what, what they are going to do. Uh, so it, it may not be it may not be um, legally advised to preempt what the federal government intends. The federal government that will tell and hear what does that mean they intend to do in the circumstances. Okay, but Barista, you you've said that um, of course that Namdi Kano didn't jump bail, and um, you were talking about the implications of this uh, ruling for. Um, the ongoing uh, uh, trial uh, of counter for treason, uh, treasonable felony, and of course terrorism. Um, however, 
uh, if we go back in time, of course, the invasion of his home in Afaroku Moaya was in September 2017 by the military. Uh, but in April, when he was given his, a set of bail conditions, 12 conditions to be precise, uh, two of them, uh, or let me say uh, three, uh, were that, okay, let's go to two. First of all, he must not hold rallies. That's a bail condition. He held a rally. Secondly, he was uh, told not to be in a crowd of more than 10 people. And of course, the people uh, around him in his home were definitely more than 10. So when you look at these bail conditions that were flouted by the man in question, can we say with all the amount of certainty, uh, you as a lawyer, that he didn't jump bail? Well, flouting, uh, flouting uh, the conditions of the bail, uh, that, that was, he actually saw that, he saw that uh, he actually did not produce uh, orders as regards the number of persons who must not hold rally and others. But that's not where the focus of the federal government is. Their focus has always been that it jumped there. I'm saying that what are the circumstances that surround this state, jump there, talking about? We, we do not the federal government that, that uh, went there and then he was giving out almost, almost uh, a few, a lot of persons were still in the process. So, I mean, they should look at it objectively. If they had not gone there, would he have traveled out when uh, uh, a document were already with the federal government? So, I mean, it, it was more like uh, 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 running away for his life if he had fell on the Because we cannot be uh, the federal government cannot be appropriating and appropriating at the same time. They must take a position on, on, on this issue and stop this issue of the dumb day, the dumb day. So are, are, you, are, you, are you saying, bar uh, Barista, are you saying that, that when you flout the conditions of your, um, your, your bail, it, it doesn't amount to, um, I mean, it's not, it's not an issue, it's not a reason for you to be taken back in, and that's not part of jumping bail? But some, some people have so also it does, argued... It does, amount, it, does to, it does amount to violation of the order of the court, which mm -hmm. is wrong. I condemn that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not speaking on this issue like because now the panel is involved. I'm saying any Nigeria, you have certain basic fundamental rights. And that is why the court gave that judgment. Let's just look at any other person who have been involved. Uh -huh. so, and when your life is threatened, when your uh, the dignity of your human person is fractured, and there are grievances that is deep to be the, the foundation of your fundamental right, it's so far a national for fundamental rights and enforcement. And then get the judgment and so as the court for damage right, that's not exactly what has happened. And, uh, uh, and they are followed. So I am saying that issue of uh, the people that were with him and the rally he held uh, proud to make him invade in the country. Those, those actions were completely wrong because they, they, they run against the orders of the court. I'm saying of issue of jumping bail outright, there was a back end story to that. But that back end institution story, we must all leave it out. Then that we talk about this thing that is jumping. To carry that story along, that's something. Well, you, you also still have some people saying that uh, he's, as a, as a matter of fact, that his right as a person to associate with others was also limited. And so the fact that he was seen in a gathering of people not necessarily maybe having a rally, uh, that's also another issue. So it's quite very dicey. But moving on, what are the lessons that we can actually take from this? Are there other existing ruling on this matter? Uh, what? what are the lessons that can be derived from this particular case and ruling? Yeah, what I'm derived from this particular case is that, first of all, the orders of court must always be obeyed. Because the orders of court are factored. It's important that we obey the orders of court. Even when we are not satisfied with it, we must keep out there with it the bounds and then appeal when there's an uh, uh, opportunity to do so. Okay? Uh, also, the, the federal government should be careful with the way it goes about violating the rights of citizens. Uh, the, the, the fact that the citizen is being charged with an offense does not mean they have been convicted. 
It is only the court of law that can determine whether the guilty of the charges referred against the Nigerian government or not. Every citizen is presumed innocent until the contrary is proven. So the federal government should be patient and always follow the law. The constitution is clear. If somebody is alleged to have committed an offense, it's still an allegation. So until the court of law look into the issue with evidence and then come to a conclusion, we should not treat suspects as criminals. It's said in law that uh, 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 suspicion, suspicion, however deep, okay, cannot cannot fall into guilt. You understand? So I, I think that the federal government should be careful. They should see the citizens as citizens that have rights, privileges, and obligations as encapsulated in the provisions of the constitution. And at the same time, the citizens should be careful too. Because if you look at section 24 of the constitution, the citizens are enjoined, okay, to obey the laws of the land, to pay their taxes, to make sure that uh, they do not flout the orders of the government and the constitution. So it is a two way street. The government must act responsibly. The citizens must act responsibly. That is how to advance democracy. That is how to advance the country. All right. So, um, um, there's a school of thought by, by a certain section of the public in Nigeria, um, you know, reacting to this, this ruling in favor of Namdi Kanu, um, saying that, uh, you know, there might be an element of fear on the part of the trial judge and no intention to cast suspicion on this person, but this is what uh, is out there in, in the court of public opinion, that, that there might be some fear um, to give an, a ruling in, not in favor of Kano because of, of um, the prevailing uh, insecurity in the Southeast, um, you know, and this may just be passing the buck to uh, a court, an appellate court or the court of appeal where the federal government is expected to go next. What do you say to this? Do you think the judge may have been afraid to rule otherwise? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, the, the judgment delivered was delivered based on evidence. You see, the fact that uh, uh, now the famous lawyer got this judgment does not mean they just throw it to the high court and ask the judge that, you know what, he was judgment. This thing happened in 2017 and it took a legal process. Okay? And and this process was completely exhausted at that level. What the court came to that conclusion. Even in the judgment, when you read the judgment, you see the reasons behind the reason, the ratio, the law cited, the evidence said that, you see everything upon which the decision was reached. It's not a decision that they just woke up and wrote judgment. So I don't think that, uh, that is not true. That's not how our law was done. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been quite interesting talking to you, Ivan, a fairly legal practitioner. And of course, uh, we'll keep monitoring the situation. Uh, the the counsel to the military uh, did say that uh, he has to consult with his people to see whether uh, what next uh, line of action to take. But you've said um, you expect that there will be an appeal. Um, so we'll be monitoring the developments to see what happens, especially also with the ongoing case uh, before the Federal High Court in Abuja. But thank you very much for your time, um, yes. Mr. Ivan Shafeli. Thank you very much. And well, and that's the size of our first conversation. Uh, fingers crossed, we'll definitely bring you up to speed with what's making the rounds as regards uh, the issue of Namdi Kanu. In the meantime, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll be heading to the second conversation right here. Whether or not subsidies should be removed, who is saying what? And when should that happen?